Federal Trade Commission uh, calling for a scrutiny of uh, companies that are developing artificial intelligence technologies. In an op-ed uh, just last week, the FTC chair, Lena Khan, warning about what she calls, quote, the expanding adoption of AI risks, uh, risks further locking in the, dominant, the market dominance of large incumbent technology firms. We want to talk about that and more. Joining us right now in an exclusive interview with FTC chair Lena Khan as we discuss uh, the world of competition, which has become uh, probably the most important thing inside boardrooms uh, around uh, the country and now the world these days. Um, chair Khan, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Um, let's let's talk uh, about AI specifically and how you're looking at big tech. Of course, uh, Microsoft has partnered up with ChatGPT. We're going to be hearing uh, later today, actually, from Google around their AI technology, Bard. But how do you think about big tech and AI at this point? So, look, these are new tools, but it's important to know that the existing rules still apply. There is no exemption or legal shield that AI enjoys. And so for the FTC, that means that our laws prohibiting unfair practices, deceptive practices, unfair methods of competition, discrimination, collusion, all of those laws are still going to be applying and, and companies need to be on notice accordingly. But how do you think about competition in this context? One of the things that's clear about AI is it requires remarkable amounts of compute power. You could consider it infrastructure, if you will. And you talk about incumbents being the winners in this game, which I imagine is something you would like uh, to avoid. How do you avoid that? If, if, that, if you think that that is the right outcome, how do you avoid that in, in, with a technology that requires vast amounts of money? I mean, the reason that ChatGPT and OpenAI uh, you know, did this deal with Microsoft, for example, to begin with was because they needed access to lots and lots of capital. Look, there's no doubt that so far we've seen how these technologies really thrive on huge data sets, huge amounts of compute power, and that certain larger firms may have an advantage. What we need to do as law enforcers is ensure that the types of opportunities and openings for competition that these moments of technological disruption can present, that those moments are not being squashed out uh, by the incumbents. And so historically, we've seen that these moments can allow new firms, can allow startups uh, to really enter and thrive and provide new innovations and make sure those innovations are being provided to all Americans. And as enforcers, that's what we need to be especially vigilant about, to make sure that incumbents are not using their existing dominance in ways that are unlawful or anti-competitive to squash out innovation and squash out competition. But you have no problem if a Microsoft or a Google or an Apple or, or an Amazon, a big, big tech company, ends up winning the AI game, if you will? Well, look, it's going to be a very fact-specific inquiry. Uh, I think history has to be a cautionary tale for us here. Uh, we need to look at what transpired the last time around when there was a significant technological inflection point where, unfortunately, and, and lawsuits from both the FTC and DOJ note this, uh, unfortunately, the dominant firms uh, were, were able to engage in anti-competitive practices in ways that shifted the trajectory of that innovation. And I think we need to be especially vigilant to make sure it's not unlawful practices that might be contributing to that. I just mentioned uh, Microsoft before. Let me ask you about uh, Microsoft and Activision. This is a transaction uh, that you have been investigating. As you know, the U.K. competition authorities have effectively blocked that transaction. They actually blocked it uh, effectively using a slightly narrower or, or different argument than I think uh, perhaps you were looking at. This was uh, specifically around cloud, the cloud gaming market as opposed to simply the console market. But can you see how your views of this transaction and their views differ? So this is a matter that's under act, in active proceedings, so there's a limited amount that I can say about it. Uh, but the FTC separately sued to block this deal back in early December. Uh, and the complaint lays out various concerns that the commission has. Uh, that includes concerns in the console market, but also concerns in the cloud market, uh, in subscription markets that are still expanding and developing. So uh, it's really looking at, at several markets, including those that are still fast growing and still developing. Uh, I think we've seen time and time again how these nascent markets can be ones where enforcers have a special mandate to make sure we're protecting competition, protecting innovation, and again, not allowing incumbents to thwart competition and innovation.